Hello! Today, we are going to be doing something different. This is much more of a podcast-style video than we I normally put on this channel. But I figured, what a better thing to just ramble about than the boys. So today, I am joined by this complete and utter girl. Hello! My name is Nicholas Butcher. It is not actually his name. Not... His name is Nick. Fuck you. Yeah, Fuck we, you. We, we, he, is, he doesn't have like an online YouTube or anything, so he, I don't believe you do, at least. No, I... So you don't have like an online name that you go by everywhere. No. Yeah, so we had to make something up to prevent his full legal name from being seen on this Zoom call and shared with the whole world. No, so today we are going to be talking about, as I said, The Boys, really season two overall. So Nick, why don't you just start off by just telling us what did you think of season two of The Boys? I, 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 I'm a person who I really liked the first season, but I gotta say this one is, is a content. I think it's a little bit better. I think uh, some characters, they overall, like they haven't, they either have, haven't give, been given much to do since the last season, like, so have, they've had less to do. And some characters that really needed to have more to do, they've given more to do. So it's almost like we're gonna, we're gonna we're flip the script a little bit. Characters that we have, we ignored, we're gonna, we're gonna emphasize on. Characters that we emphasize on, we're gonna push him back for a little bit. I really, I really, I really admire that. You know, I, I think, actually, I actually think one of the biggest weaknesses from season one was they tried to focus on too many characters. Yeah. Like, they just, I feel like it was almost like the character writing, this show is not, I would not classify this full on as an action show, but I actually think the action is kind of weak. I'd classify it as a dramedy. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't classify it as a full on. The action, the fight scenes are pretty, are, fine but in general they normally only last a couple of seconds it's it's it is very the creator of the showrunner eric kripke he is a he's a style with all with a lot of his shows and this is certainly a part of that style where it's it's bloody it's it's gruesome and there are some action scenes but for the most part it's about the character interactions yeah no so i feel like the biggest problem with season one really at the core of the issue was unfortunately Holy crap, they focus on too many. Like, you have Stillwell and Homelander, Billy, Billy, Bus Billy Buster, Huey, Annie, The Deep, A Train. Uh, you focus so much on all of them that I feel like while it was good, they didn't get a chance to all fully shine. I feel like this season, they, they, they looked at what worked and like. Everybody got a moment, but like there wasn't there wasn't much A train this season, for example, compared to last season. No, I mean they still they wanted to they still try try to keep him relevant, but at the same time they're like, we're gonna hold this character off because we don't really have a well, we don't we because here's the thing they needed an excuse they needed a uh, they needed a, re a way to say listen if we have a Nazi in the story we need like to kind of. Have a reason for this guy for them not be working together. So let's just. Yeah, no, I mean, it got to the point when on some level it was like, you can't have. Him work with a Nazi. Like. Yeah, no, and I feel like that's a lot of the show. I feel like despite all the social commentary, you gotta give this joke. You gotta give the creator credit for the class that they have for being like, you know what? No. We're not gonna do. No, the show is. Like, with the exception of a few characters on the side, even most of the villains are like, Stormfront is bad. Oh, like, yeah. Nazis, Hitler, bad. Like, like they, they don't really, they don't play into any, like, edgy, like, well, maybe. No. It is a, it, it's a common thing with comic book supervillains that even the worst of the worst villains will be like, Oh, I'm still not a Nazi. Like, there's a famous Captain America comic book where Joker works for Red Skull, and the second he figures out he's a Nazi, he's like, "I regret ever working for you because I'm a monster, but I'm not a Nazi." You know, I think that kind of summarized the whole thing perfectly. It's like that uh, that Captain America comic, yeah, that Captain America Joker crossover. But like, yeah, I feel like that's what makes it so interesting. Is that like Stormfront is she's so bad because she's a Nazi. Yes. Like and you, you get the feeling you're you get the feeling you're never actually quite sure 
what I like. I'm, I'm one of my things that was starting from is like, if she was, if you took her out out of the Nazi, like, uh, if she was born in the modern day, like a way, way, she's still yeah. evil because she still clearly seems to enjoy murdering people. Oh yeah, no. But you're also left to wonder with Stormfront, like, no, Stormfront full on. Stormfront also is not just a Nazi; she's a white supremacist. So a Nazi. <laughs> no, but like the Nazis were are like historically the Hitler Nazis wanted to kill people, but like the Nazis aren't weren't also legitimately concerned, like. Stormfront seems to legitimately think, like, black people are going to commit white genocide. Yeah. Like, you know, the Nazis were racist, but they weren't, like, Stormfront almost seems legitimately afraid. Yeah. Like, the white, the Nazis weren't, like, legitimately scared of the Jewish people. They were just really racist, from my under, from what I know. Like, it's great to them. It's like, the Stormfront literally said to Ryan, by the way, Stormfront is a god. She's basically a god, and she's like, so they want to genocide us white people. She's I'm like, there, I'm like she's no the, one can uh, kill Shazam. you people. Yeah, she's there, Shazam, Captain Marvel, allegory, so. You know, but I'm just saying, like, she's, like, she's saying she it. There. Like, she seems to, on some level, be concerned for her race, at least. Yeah, I mean, like, she but... knows nobody can, she knows they're not white genociding her. Yeah. Like, who's gonna do it? No one. Besides Home, unless Homelander, unless no, I don't think there's anybody besides Homelander who could, right, and, uh, Ryan, <laughs> who could, uh, we'll get to later, who could kill Stormfront. You know what I mean? I only see what Stormfront is afraid of personally, but whatever. Yeah, the exception of Homelander, she's not, she's the, she's the biggest wolf in the woods. Yeah, like, what? Well, actually, they. Well, no, Maeve it, it, they, kinda, Maeve would... well, they 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 kind of make it make it a point to show you that that if if it wasn't for the if three of them, Stormfront would have killed killed each of them singularly on their own. No, but I think May definitely did the best. Dave May definitely did the best, but Stormfront's still an overall more powerful. I mean, character. who I would say. Well, a a Annie, Annie, I was expecting her to do something, considering she has electricity power store for No, Annie gets her ass kicked. Yeah. Is that, uh, that seems to be a running theme. I actually do wonder why Annie was ever in the set, because Annie's by far the weakest, besides from Deep, the weakest person on that team. No, like, I, I think over, like, her, she's a very strong power, so, like, the Blast, but I think one of the main reasons they hired her is because she was the cutesy all-american girl that's like it's not because Cute. of her power plays, it's white, because of white her. blonde christian wholesome yeah yeah but i mean there there still seems to be a general interest with the seven of having to be powerful but yeah i think we're getting off topic yes no but uh you, you enjoyed season 10 very much so yes yeah i think we all did but why don't we actually dive into an actual topic. Yes. So, I think we should just... I really just want to dive into talking about the characters. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, uh, first and foremost, the, kind of the, one of the, one of the two main characters, let's talk about him, is Butcher. But. By the way, Butcher, the best character in the season part. And I don't like Butcher that much, but he's the best character. As a guy who's read some of the comic books, I... I, 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 I No spoilers to the comic. No, but I, as a person who's read, who's read some of the comic books, I think that Butcher, they've handled him a lot better in this show. Than that, that, uh, that's my only, like over thing. Is the book, Garth Ennis, the writer of the book, his thing, he's a very... Gotcha! Oh my God, this is disgusting and gruesome and visceral and. It's that. kind of like that meme people had with Game of Thrones at the end, really. They're like, Game of Thrones turns into just shock value, but like, it's like that taken to the extreme. It's like, what if Game of Thrones had literally no substance at all, like nothing? Yeah, like, like there's there was no another, substance like, to the comic. It's like, 
there's enough substance for like people to make shows out of Garth Ennis' projects, but they're usually heavily changed to give. They're like, there's something there, but we need somebody else to work. If somebody else can work on this, then we can make these ideas work. Like a good example is uh, Preacher. I hear the Preacher did really well, Fred Brennan the comic, and Daredevil season two, which was heavily inspired off Garth Ennis's Punisher run. Yeah. And Punisher, they, it's Punisher and Garth Ennis. It's well, it, it, you if you walk the boy, you can tell. You can you can yeah. you can imagine what Garth Ennis would do with the Punisher. Yeah, because like the boys, it's a lot in the in the book. It's a lot more cynical, and because the, the, Garth Ennis hates kind of hates superheroes, so he made it as a middle finger to DC Comics, and that's I feel like one of the reasons why DC was like, I think we're gonna give you give this book to somebody else at this point. Well, I also but, feel I also don't know the legal implications of how much they actually owned or if they published it or whatever. But yeah, but but yeah, so he. But yeah, the boys didn't have much stuff. It was a lot of just gotcha moments. With- yeah, and like Buster is more like Buster is more like what you so what the Buster that you see through until the end until like the end of season one. That's what you get in the comic the entire time. Yeah, he's like a, basically the in the Butcher is a character where it's like if there were no other superheroes like in the world, he'd be the main villain of the series because he's like an evil, evil man in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Butcher, you know, not even, well, yeah, but let's not get into the comic. We don't want to spoil. I'm saying there's no redeem. There's no redeeming qualities. Yeah, character. no, like they they, they changed like, him and they made him. I think for all, even for Homelander too, they're taking them and yes. they're making them way more likable. And also, some like, what, what I'm always what I'm impressed with Homelander. Homelander is one of the favorite, favorite characters in the show because I love a good bad guy. But I think Homelander in the in the book does arguably worse stuff. Yeah. But he's not. But but he's also. But he's more of a whiny. Brat. Yeah, there's less charisma to him. Yeah, in this one, he's still kind of a whiny, like amateur child. But he's a lot more intelligent and manipulative and cunning. No, I... and he's also just a scary character. Like when he like the scene in. The final episode of season two, when he closes the door to all those guards, every me and my father when we were watching, I were like, "Oh shit, this is gonna be horrifying. What's about to happen next?" Yeah, you no. Know, I think also it's a testament because most people will agree with you at this point. Evil Superman is boring as crap. Yeah. There have been so many evil Superman stories. So many. Yeah, that's why I'm happy that Homelander and the. Because I feel like with Homelander like, in season one, their thing was, listen, nobody wants to see like nobody wants to see Evil Superman like or at the very least if people want to like so people have already seen Evil Superman, so let's just not just not only make him evil but let's make him scary. Because well, no, Evil but Superman, let's like, also make justice, him. A lot of comic books. I don't want to call him well. sympathetic. Yeah, he's sympathetic as well, but in Justice characters, in Justice, he was also sympathetic, but he was more of just the big, powerful, scary, because, like, it's more of just, oh, I'm Superman, I'm real, I'm, I'm going to take over the world. Homelander wants to watch you suffer, and this is a scary, you know, Like, evil... most of the time when they do evil Superman, it's not, it's like, he's still intelligent. It's more just lifting up a like building and still... dropping down people. Like, it's never as personal as it is for Homelander. Yeah, no. Uh, could you repeat that? You got you cut off for a second, dude. No, uh, it's no, it's not just lifting up a building and dropping on innocent people. It's more personal for Homelander. He wants to like, oh uh, yeah, he, like he, like there's that scene in season one when there's like that that gunman and he just sticks his hand to his chest and goes, Shh, and starts looking at him in the eye, watching the light go out, and he's like, ah yeah. Oh, yeah. Now about that. speaking of Homelander, I do want to say I feel like this show biggest problem and sometimes I think they take things a little too far. Yeah. And by the way, some of the things they do, they do with things that aren't in the comics. Now, not a spoiler, Stormfront is a man in the comic. There is no romance with Homelander in the comic. He, it's, it's a very Captain Marvel uh, Shazam character. In yeah, no, but so this is the, and he, he, he is still a Nazi, though, correct? Uh, yes. Look, yes, yeah, he's also a, he's also and a Nazi. And Nazi probably makes more sense, because, you know, gender roles at the time, but whatever. Yes. Like, uh... Uh, yeah, it's, um, sorry, I'm trying to do something. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Stormfront is a guy in the comic books. I get a lot of the, again, Gar- because of Garth Ennis, admittedly not so good writing, they had to change a lot of stuff and also fit, not only fit for a TV show, but also make it a little better for a wider audience. 
which I think it, 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 it's it's just going right, to so show you the perfect creative pair of Seth Rogen and Eric Kripke. No, I, I agree with that, but I also think... Who knew uh, Seth Rogen can make such a good prop? And no, I always like There's a scene in season two, and I remember I, I, warned, I remember I called you, you kept telling me not to fall, and I said, I don't care, I'm warning you, but I, I felt this so uncomfortable. The scene after they get to get Storm, Stormfront and Homelander get together, and she, she uh, strokes his... She strokes his uh, penis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. While yeah. they fight guards. And then while well, he killed somebody. And then, like, as he ejaculates, he, like, witches somebody's head to death. Yeah. Again, that's very, like, again, they still need Garth Ennis somewhere in that show. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's... they do. Hmm. Like, it can't be a Garth Ennis book without rape and murder. Like, but... So... Yeah, so a lot... So... Homelander is like I think again he's one of my favorite characters because of, he's a very interesting he's like he's simple it's one of the like um for those of you who know who also watch Star Wars he reminds me a lot of Darth Maul who's a character who is an evil evil character and he's not sympathetic but he's but you feel pity for him because like he has a sympathetic backstory yeah, yeah, well, that's what a sympathetic <laughs> that's what that's what, that's what a sympathetic aesthetic villain normally is like you're normally not the Poe to legitimately feel bad for like a mass murdering genocidal man. Like Mr. Freeze is a sympathetic villain. Yeah, Homelander is like. But like, but Mr. Freeze, but characters like Homelander, that kind of sympathetic villain, like the kind of people that are legit. Pity. Mr. Freeze isn't pity. really a villain. You know what I mean? I call I call Homelander a pity villain. We're like, well, no, I I'm not that going... Mr. Freeze, for example, is it really a uh, like Mr. Freeze isn't going he's around murdering. You know, he's he's not like mass murdering people or committing genocide. Yeah. Like, like Homelander, no. Homelander, you're, you're not legitimately supposed to feel bad for Homelander. You're not supposed mm-hmm. to legitimately be like, maybe maybe the boys are the assholes. No. Well, like, they are, but... No, but like, with Batman and Mr. Freeze, sometimes you're like, maybe you shouldn't be beating him up. Maybe he's, maybe you're like, you see, he's a bad guy, but you don't feel bad for Nora. You know what I mean? Yeah. So why don't we now talk about Ryan and Homelander? Yeah, Ryan is, he's kind of, he, he, he's, Ryan, I have mixed along, he's kind of a borderline MacGuffin character where he's, he has a personality, but it's, it's clearly more, he's more of a catalyst for change in Butcher and Homelander. Yeah, that, that leads me to wonder. I hope, I feel like the writing on this show is smarter. I, I hope he comes back and has a purpose. Yeah, you want like you want a John Kent type character. I just want him to have a purpose. I I, I I hope that the writers aren't so lazy that they would create a MacGuffin character. Yeah. Like if, he, if, if Ryan doesn't come back, it's it leads to two things. One, it's stupid. I'm sorry. I mean, he, Ryan existing is a big deal in this universe. Hmm. He is, from my understanding, the first naturally born superhero. They point that out. Yeah. So you can't introduce a plot element like that and then say, and now it is gone. Forever. We will never bring it up again. I mean, at the very least, tie it in later and give Annie and Huey a kid or something as like a method of bringing back a natural born soup idea. Yeah. Which also leads me to the question of why is he the first natural born soup? Because it's super, it's Superman sperm. I don't know. No, but you, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, you would think when you think about yeah, it, you you think if but, it is genetic, then yeah. But I'm saying maybe it's because it's Superman super sperm. Maybe it, like it's it, what? What did Homelander have? Homelander? What did he have? The Homelander first? Yeah, I mean, like, let's, like, maybe all these other superheroes have, like, are infertile, and Superman just so, or Homelander's sperm is so... Well, I know, but, but, but no, that, they're not infertile. Huh? Stormfront had the kid. So they can have children. Well, they never say she has a kid. Yes, she has a daughter. Oh, yeah, so Stormfront, like, I keep, Starlight and Stormfront, like, they sound so similar, so that's I just, why, I have to, That's I, why I've taken to calling, I've taken to calling her Annie for two reasons. One, she's not really going by Starlight anymore. True. Like, she go and buy it as a joke, 
like like Buster calls her that offensively. It's it's more it's more of it's more of a work title for her. Yeah, it's more like it's more like it's more like call it being a secretary, being like Mr. Secretary. Yeah. And during the during the government, like Mr. Secretary of Defense, it's like Mr. President, more like Mr. President in movies. It's kind of like how in like they, they for a bunch of some of the other members members of the Seven, like when they're on being professional, they're referred to as like their hero names. But sometimes in other during certain scenes when they're, they're kind of like other with characters that are familiar with them or something else, like for they refer to the Deep as Kevin or yeah, they call uh, him Kevin. No, May, even though like uh, Maeve's girlfriend refers to her as Maeve like affectionately, she referred they refer to her as Maggie or Maggie Shaw at some point. Yeah, no, we got their name, but uh. What I what I did realize is that where did she get Maeve Maeve from? By the way, yeah, dude, that's not my thing. First of all, the nerve to call you Queen May. Like I'm kind of I kind of want to look this up. Like after this podcast, like is Maeve a reference to something? It's got to be right. It may just be Maggie. It may be like a, it may be like a, like a pun on that on her on her real name. I don't know. But like, wait, like, what is what the hell is a train a reference to? Like it's a stupid name. Yeah, a train. He's very fast. But why A? Like... Because it's A, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, like, Homelander. What kind of name is Homelander? Homelander is because he's the he's the, he's the, the Homeland, which is, like, a, a nickname for the America, a Homeland. That's still stupid, though. Well, you know well, you know why a lot of these names are stupid? Because they're marketing. No, because Garth Ennis hated superheroes, and he, in an interview he said, I wrote these characters to have the dumbest name possible because I hate them. By the way, was, by the way interview. some of these names I like, by the way, I like Thorn. People Brown. literally ask Garth Ennis, why do you come up, why do you give these characters kind of like mundane names? Just, because I hate them. That's that's all, that's why. Okay, two things. One, Stormfront is a good name, though. Stormfront's a very good name. Like, he, he, he struck gold with that one. No, and, I actually do like Starlight. I think that's a good name. I, th- I think Homelander is a Homelander is a good name for this character. I feel like if you put it, you know, if you like, it's like if you, no, give you, need, any, you could not, not have a DC like, character named Homelander. No, it, also, it sounds like a discount Bucky Barnes character. Oh my god! Or a U.S. agent type character. It sounds like a discount. It sounds like a discount version of a discount version of a discount version of Captain America. Not even Cat, yeah, Captain America. Not even Captain America of U.S. Agent. No, but U.S. Agent is a dick count Captain America. Yeah, but like, he, I mean, that's what he is. He he's somebody <laughs> with like he, he literally that's that Captain Steve Rogers became U.S. Agent when he couldn't be Cap. He's literally a dick count version of Captain America. But I was wondering what the hell happened. I don't know. That was a confusing time for Marvel for me. Uh, yeah, well, what is it? Not a confusing time for Marvel. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, at least I, these days are consistent. They're doing their Game of Thrones and the Winter <laughs> event. Do they uh, they even announce what Endless Winter is gonna be? Yeah, about? it's stupid. What? I'll tell you about it after we call it dumb. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. It's something about like an ice god and the Viking for some stupid bullshit. Is why I prefer D- for Marvel, even though they have more crossovers, it's never like world ending. Though there oh no, no, it's apparently it's just like one in the world with apparently it's just like DC Universe, but I say it's not even. Well, I here's mean, the thing with DC where it's like, oh, we got the anti model, the most powerful guy in the universe. No, never mind. Now we got Superboy Prime, the most powerful guy in the universe. And now and we, we have Perpetua, the anti monitor, monitor mommy. And, and, the then we had, now we had the and we got the over monitor. Now we got. This new girl from Binding the Source Wall. Now we got Doctor Manhattan. Now we got now we have this- now we have Batman, who, the an it's evil Batman. It's become Dragon Ball Super, where it's like here's the next power. No, now it's like now we have the Batman who laughs becoming Doctor Manhattan, and now you can call him the Bat Hatton who laughs. Screw it's DC. Dra- it's dra- DC's a Damn Dragon it, Ball. Snyder. It's all about power levels. No, I love Scott Snyder, but he always, he's like the head guy right now at DC. Like Joker, he, there's like an actual line from like one of those storylines where Lex Luthor asked Joker like to help him stop Batman, like Batman who laughs, like, and, like, or like, and like the new god lady is behind the sword wall, and he's like, no, I, I'm used to fighting Batman in a, in a dirty alley. Now every, every time I, I join in, it's like a fucking fight in the moon. It's all, it's like, I want to go back to, Joker is the audience. It's like, I want to go Joker's back to. Joker's like, this is scary and stupid. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Like, like, I'm the Joker, but I am scared of the giant lady that's taking over the universe. Yeah. 
exploding wind up penguins or were like are my threshold at this point dude. yeah like, and you gotta feel bad for albert who was just getting around all the time like i'm like i, I am a butler yeah, like, why I'm... is why is my the person i know to be serving dressing as a bat and, and, and why is there an alternate reality? And why am I transporting myself to an alternate dimension where I have to watch his parents die in front of him? This is dumb. Like, I don't need. To, I don't need. To, I don't need to take this, Bruce. I had sex. I'm with a Elizabeth. butler. I was like, I, I fucked Queen Elizabeth. I do not have to True take story. this. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have to take this from a spoiled brat. You know, but back to the topic of the boys. <laughs> yeah, um, that I think, um, I think this is the weakest aspect, to be honest. It's, is Huey supposed to be the main character of this story? He is, he's, no, he sucks! The, no, he's not supposed to be the, really the main character, he's supposed to be like the... Point of view the, character. Yeah, the man on the ground. Like, he's supposed to be the audience's like, view into this world, where it's like, this is crazy, right? We're all in a group. Because the rest of the boys, they're kind of jaded or prepared for this. Annie, even though she's also new, she also has powers. Huey's like, this well, is I fucking. Like, I would almost say to Annie and Huey both feel that Annie filled the role in. But that Annie way. still has powers though. She's still like a part of that world. No, but Huey's the point of view like, into that world. Like she's the yeah. point of view into the superhero world. Huey's yeah. the point of view into the regular shit world. Yeah, and he's like, they're both like, this is this is crazy, right? None of this is supposed to happen. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, this is fucked up. <laughs> anybody hear me speaking, right? No? Alright, fuck me. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Right? No, but, uh, I, yeah, I feel like uh, all the characters that seem to are fine. But maybe the plot line was weird. The main plot line, like, I was interested it in. It didn't it feel consistent. Kind of just, it kind of just, yeah, it was in, because it's like, it, I, I look. I like Maeve, and I like that little romance subplot with her and her girlfriend. And I think home, like, I, that that one line with Homelander, like, kind of like after he outs her, like when they're doing that, like that, like pro, like uh, kind of really condescendingly, like pro gay, pro -gay yeah. like commercial, like food commercial. And Homelander's like, "Girls, get it on." He's like, "Get it done." What I said, and like I like Homelander. Like, they got a perfect actor to play Homelander because he's both. Scary, sympathetic, and you want to punch him in the face every five seconds. No, I mean, and I like, think it's, it's, like, it's like Tom Hiddleston is Loki. This is an actor where like you get all the range of emotions we want, and you also want to punch him in the face every five seconds. No, and I think that's it. The problem with made plot line is that it turns that like it kind of you know, she gets off. outed by Homelander. Her girlfriend dumps her basically, and then she's sad, and then she saves Annie, and then she. Finds out Stormfront is a Nazi and decides to help for some reason. Dude. Well, I'm pretty sure she was already on her way because I don't think she can move that fast. Like, for like, in the span of like 10 minutes, she gets to the other half. Yeah, that's what I was so she was at Fox. Like, like, when she saw the video, how she. Oh, yeah! How the fuck she get No, the whole thing is really dumb. It's, I'm sorry, it's dumb and it's stupid. How, like, really, her whole plot line was like this. Very real plotline about gay people. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and about being yeah, exposed, about being manipulated, about PR, about companies being pro-gay just for the PR. That was all yeah, very real. Yeah, like we, like, I don't really wear a suit. Yeah, but our our people say that like we need like only like if yeah. people like lesbians if one of them is in a is in a male 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 like uh, place. Also, like, you can't sleep with men anymore, even though you can't call yourself bisexual. People only, only really you know, refer to that. Then. This is what I said to that. You know what I said to that? This is all really good. And then they turn around and they ruin it. By have basically dumping it. Like, her yeah. girlfriend leads her. She just gets really depressed. I do like those, like, uh... And then she's I, not even... But the thing is, she's not even, uh... She, the thing is, she then... Annie goes to her in the final episode and asks for help. She said yeah. no. But there's no build up to her. Like, uh, obviously, everybody in America should be anti Nazi. Like, original Nazi. Like, not to be political, but like, be original Nazi party none of us like. Yeah. I think they say you are a sane human being, and you find out somebody was a, was, is like alive and a, that was actively part. Like, Had dinner with Adolf Hitler. Yeah, like, that no, was, no. Then what? you turn around and you have a problem with that person. That is not my problem. My problem is that she hasn't had a problem with anything. She hasn't 
The fact that that is what made her go, I'm gonna piss trying to piss off Homelander now. Like, I, you know, well, you, you would think when he personally I, I, I doing think, her. I think it was, what I think it was is, is again, she, it, they made it, even in season one, they kind of established that Maeve has a soft spot for Starlight because she reminds her of her younger self. Yeah. She's like, I don't want, I don't want this person to go down the road. Yeah, I and he is, it almost feels like in the beginning the show, of the and, season, so, are Maeve they, pretty, they kind of feel like friends. A little bit. Yeah, Maeve pretty much. Let's be honest. Like it's pretty. Uh, at least Maeve kind of knew they were going for Stormfront. So the second that information on Stormfront went like went out, and Maeve was like, "Okay, Stormfront's going to go after him. Go kill her. I got to probably stop this." That that's my reasoning for why she was there. Because like she's going to go kill. No, but Stormfront. she wasn't all bad. No, but she saw it online. It's still stupid. No, how she got there so fast? Yes, but I understand why she was there. She's like, "Okay, I got to go save this kid." Like, I mean, yeah, I guess that's fair. Like, I mean, Maeve, like, Maeve just felt like the most inconsistent arc. Like, at one point, the first, like, yeah. most of the episode felt like without her, her, her being bisexual and how that is affecting her life and her love life. And then it felt like it was about nothing, really. Like, it felt like, it felt like she became less of a plot. It felt like it was less of a plot and more just Maeve reacting, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I do admit, though, I should like that, that one scene, though, after, um, Oh, with, with Ashley, the late yeah. laughter with Ashley, and he's like, Ashley forcing your fucking life acts like a goddamn human being. She's like, I'm sorry. No, and then she starts to cry, and, and that's when Ashley realizes, oh, this is, this is like real. Like you were, you loved this woman. Yeah, like I also like though how it divides uh, for the Ashley, Ashley, for the Ashley character. Like, for the Ashley character, when they when I saw her in the first season, I immediately had flashbacks to her character Jessica Jones. I'm like, I'm going to hate this woman automatically. She, I feel so like, bad yeah, she, for her. She's, kind of acting, she's acting like the same character already. And in the sex so the second that scene happened, yeah. it, like I'm like, okay, I I actually I might care about that. Down yeah, the line for me, my thing with Ashley is that she doesn't seem like a very bad person to me. Yeah, she seems like, like she, she seems like a lie. shitty person, but like no more than any PR or CEO. Like a regular mm -hmm. person and like charge of the company. And it feels to me more like, did you remember when Homelander like took out the blind guy's hearing? She was like, oh my god, are you okay? She was yeah. really concerned about him. And it seems to me more like she realized, okay, I Homelander's a bad guy. Yeah. Like Homelander is a bad person. Yeah. Like what well, the I... hell is she supposed to do, you know? Yeah. Like, Homelander um, will kill her. Homelander makes that very clear in the game. If she doesn't play the game, if she doesn't play his game, she will die. Yeah. You know, I, here's a... Here, I'm gonna, we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go down the line for some for like some of the Seven and the boys, and let's just talk yeah. about what we thought of that there this season. Okay. Uh, me, what, speaking of, let's let's talk about uh, everybody's favorite, Annie Starlight. Annie January, a.k.a. Starlight. A Annie is, like, my second favorite character in this year. Oh! Yeah, you like you always tell me you like this character. Like, for me, like I like. <laughs> That's also mean I really like like I really like the like idealistic superhero, and I like this yeah. portrayal of it. Like this, this the very Star Girl esque ide ide idealistic. Yeah. Not even not even Star Girl esque, more like two. I don't like I. Well, she 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 didn't she's she's be a Star Girl. Uh, no, but more but the way she acts. What do you know what I feel like? Very Cara Danvers. No, very around. very Clark, very Superman. In the sense that she, she feels like she's that character. She, you know, she, she believes in having hope. You know what I mean? She, she's very much that kind of. She's almost First me. justice in the American way, a good old fashioned yeah, Christian. No, she feels almost like she genuinely kind of acts the way Homelander. She almost kind of feels like if she had all the past, she had Homelander powers, she would be acting the way Homelander does. But he, it would be genuine. Like his, yeah. his like public Homelander Superman persona. That if oh, Annie had those powers. That would be what Annie did, but she would mean every word. Like, when she said, we are your hero, she would mean it. Yeah. Homelander is lying. Say, yeah, Homelander is a... a she's sociopath. almost a foil to Homelander in that regard. She's basically his fake persona, but real. Yeah. Can I just say, I feel so bad for this, for this Starlight's actor. Oh my god. Is that... She's in two superhero shows, and she gets raped by a supervillain both yes. times. Apparently. Fun fact, though, the guy who played Butcher wants to play Wolverine, apparently. No, yeah, well, he, he's in, like, 
Yeah, the the um, Carl Urban is is known as like the kind of like the male Sigourney Weaver, by which I mean he's, he's a good actor. Like, yeah. No, he's in every sci-fi fantasy stuff. He's in Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, Marvel, like DC, Judge Dredd, like yeah. the boy. But, 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 okay, but, no, but getting back on track, um, I I like Starlight. I, I want to say more about well, when we talk about her and Huey to combine. I mean, I feel like both characters in the in the show are strongest when they're together. Yeah, I think play the 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 after play those, off of the those, other those two actors have a very good chemi- on screen chem- chemistry. Yes. It's, no, it's a phenomenal chemistry. Yeah, it's at least it's I didn't very... really notice though how good it was until like episode two or three when they were in the yeah, car the, singing, the road, and I was like, road, road okay, road. this feels so genuine and real. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're like friends in real life or something. I know that uh. uh... Karen Fukuhara and Aaron Moriarty, um, Kimiko, the female, and um, Starlight, Starlight, they're good friends in real life. Yeah, I do know, because uh, the girl who the, the girl who Kimiko actually has a uh, YouTube channel now. Yeah, I, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, they, they, they do YouTube. Like, they are, they are, they are clearly buddies. Well, uh, Karen Fukuhara, I, I love that actress. She like, is um, so good at Kimiko. So good, yeah. She's so good as the female. Yes, Look, she's so um, good. I think I think what makes it so impressive is that she's like a silent actor. She's acting basically. Without you know, my my reason is like they always hire for silent actor for silent roles like Katana and Suicide Squad, which I'm like I'm really sad they didn't, they didn't give much to because she's very she's a very good actress. Then the boys certainly emphasize this, but I feel like the fact they keep giving her silent roles is because if you ever hear her speak, she is like the most teenage girl as to the to the point where she voices like a bunch of teenage girls on like Shira and Kipo. Yeah, you know, like and, animated program. Like she, 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 she sounds like a very young girl considering her age. I'm like, you can't really take this badass girl seriously. What you sound? You can't make her like a badass like a badass adult character because she sounds like she's fifteen. Like so, they're like, you know what? We basically the, the girl's name is basic character of X twenty three. Let's like, and, and she's mute in the comic books. But we're like, let's just. You know, I think in the comic book she she does talk, but very little. They're like, let's no. just keep her silent for now. You know, you know, you know what my favorite thing in the show is the uh, her laugh when she laughs. Uh, that is my favorite moment of her all. Season. Like when Stormfront then she go and she, she's like, Stormfront, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. And of course she fails. She doesn't kill Stormfront. She fails because Stormfront would destroy her in a fight. But uh, no. But Annie is it's weird though, since Stormfront didn't have a problem with like her brother, but didn't the Nazis work with the Japanese during World War II? They did. <laughs> so but, I feel like like no, oh, God, but <laughs> it is just basically historically known that Hitler's plan was to betray everyone. Hitler's yeah, angle it's, kind of, it's kind of it's kind of in hindsight it's kind of funny. No, but I, I, I from my understanding that the, in most of most theory that Hitler's angle was he wanted to take over the whole. I just, need, I just need an Italian, and I brought me an axis of righteousness. No, but apparently Hitler was uh he was planning on uh yeah yeah he no yeah he was, he was, he was, he was, Hitler was a punk like and he he he, he, he betrayed everybody. Yeah, I mean I see. Well, I was watching like a history video the other day, and like there they pointed out how Hitler would literally make treaties and then like the trade people like a week later. Yeah. He'd be, like, he'd be like, oh, yeah, a treaty? My army, while you've been tra- heading home to tell your people that we made a treaty, yeah, I sent my army over to kill you. He was the Donald Trump of Germany in this point. No, that, let's not get into that. Yeah. But, no, no I don't want to get into politics. But, no, but this is the thing. Um, Annie is, the, is my favorite one of the seven. You don't include Homelander overall. Like, yeah. Any, any of my favorite characters. So I only know. That I only think it's fair to say she's my favorite of the seven. You know what I mean? The, char- the, char- the character that, like, again, out of like, I think the two characters that I, I really wanted more from in the first season, I'm half. I'm so happy they, they they did in this one, and that is Frenchie and Black Noir. Frenchie was a character. I'm like, I like this character, but I kind, but like, like Mother's Milk. Like, I I like, I I like Mother's Milk in like a mentor role. In a major role, yes, but like, and, and they, they kind of they they gave him like some stuff in the last season, and I gave him like a good episode. I really liked his episode, like his arc or little thing with um, 
the, the road trip episode with Annie, with Huey and Star. That, okay, can I just say, my favorite thing. He's like thing. the angry chaperone who's like, I didn't even want to be a part of this. And no, he didn't, even, he didn't even think it was a good idea to her to come. And Annie, like, pulled out all the stops. Like, she's like, I have a cousin in that area. We can make... Awesome. Superpowers. Like, we're going to go fight a, fight a supervillain. Like, and he's just like, you know what? That's true. You're acting, real, you're acting pretty strong, and maybe you can keep us alive. And, of course, Annie does nothing. <laughs> And he kind of said a lot, but you know, one of my favorite scenes though is when, uh, it was the first, it's when they start thinking we didn't start the fire. Mm. And first of all, you can see, uh, Huey is like apprehensive to start singing. Yeah. And Annie does, and he, and he just joins in and they start singing together. And like, that, at first it's like very cute, casual, and then they start fucking screaming. Yeah. Like they're just full on screaming. And that is like, when I, Mother I, Milk I, is like, uh, before we go back to characters, can we talk about the Billy Joel stuff? I'm like, you know, each episode they had a different Billy Joel song. I'm like thinking like, we have some Billy Joel. And the second episode, I'm like, oh, it's another Billy Joel. Episode. Kind of, it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Next one, I'm like, okay, is this is a thing going on. Next one, another Billy Joel. I'm like, okay, this is like a thing we're doing now. No, there's a reason. There's a reason, reason for this. And then, and then at the end, they oh, at the, I, li- I like, I like the reason, but I also love, I also love Billy Joel. So I'm like, I'm not complaining. I really like these songs. You know. I I also like how Annie like Billy Joel too. Yeah, well, the, well she's more like I, I, I she's she's like she's not a super fan like Huey is. She's more like oh I like this, I like these songs. Oh yeah, no, but that's what I mean. Like Annie yeah. likes Billy. Annie likes the music. Yeah. And she knows she, she liked it enough that she knows the words, which I think is no, really clear, cool. Yeah, lyrics we inside the part. Yeah. No, uh, but I mean. Mother's milk, yeah. He, I like, I like that character. I like like the, the OCD little thing, and I like, I like his little, his little. You know, I knew what I like about it though. I like his backstory. No, I, I like, like his... how realistic it is. Do you want to know something? I have OCD. I do. I, I, you know, I, when I, you're I, around I... somebody enough, you don't really notice. Like, so Huey was so stressed out when he was meeting Mother's milk, he probably didn't even realize. Yeah. But Annie, but had, Annie, Annie after after, after so like a, no, but it. Annie in like a few hours of knowing him in like a normal mm-hmm. setting, like when they're not like trying to survive, of like mm-hmm. just like traveling in a car with him, it's like he he has OCD. He was like, oh, he does. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, like it's like they haven't known. I like that though. Be it, it called back to him in the beginning of the series season. You saw Annie and Huey both getting ready for the day. Yeah. Or, yeah, so Andy was like, he didn't like Yeah, I kind of want to go back to the to earlier on, earlier episodes, and see if, like, he does have, like, OCD. I want to see yeah, if, like, if but basically, though, if you look at it, like, Annie, and it's a great parallel, because Annie, it, it shows that Annie would, is in, like, a calm enough environment that she notices it, and he does it, because his life is so stressful. Like, go back to that parallel with the two of them in the beginning of the season, where you see Annie, like, you know, she's doing her hair, she's sitting in this incredibly expensive hotel room like pure white room like i think there was some gold in there you know what i mean yeah doing her it's hair very donald trump looking hotel no well not, not in like a bad way just in, just in like is it he clearly living regardless of how shitty being on the this is the height of luxury what this is the height of luxury no but she's, no, she's living pretty well and then you cut to Huey in like a, in like this like a moldy pawn job basement. She ain't even like he's, a broken he's by, razor. Like, he's by drug drug tra- drug drug dealers and human traffickers. <laughs> yeah, no, and he's just like, I hate this. And, and you cut that to Starlight, and she's like walking out the door, like eating breakfast, and Huey's yeah. like eating eating like a half eaten moldy bagel. Like I, and then you see, it, and they meet up, and you look at him, and he's like, and she's like, hey, and he's just like. Like, he's so sick and tired. Yeah, it's like... Like, yeah, yeah, so with Frenchie and Frenchie, like, that's a character I really wanted to see more of. Like, I wanted to see, like, more of his... Like, they give they give hints to his... Like, they don't... You don't even know his real name in season one. They finally kind of revealed his name in this season as uh, Serge. Yeah. Which, uh... I, I think it was... Do we like, know Mother Milk's like, real name? No, his real name is Mother's Milk. Like, his mother... His mother named him Mother. Oh no, uh, Martin. His name. His name is Martin. Martin Milk. Martin Milk. His name is Martin Milk. That's also Garth Ennis making fun of superhero comics. That's a stupid name. Yeah. 
But uh, actually, no, I don't think you ever ever know his real name. I think in the book, like I think he's just called Mother's Milk. Like Frenchie, they never really say his real name. Yeah, no, I, I, I like. Home, that they Homelander doesn't have a real name in the book. So, um, Maeve doesn't have a real name. Like most of the characters are very just flat. Like Kim, like the female is called the female. Yeah, and I really, that's, a really, that's, a, that's a really cool superhero name. But I would like to hear a real name as well. Well, it's also not something you can really do anymore. Like you couldn't. Do like you, you can, you can, because like, because the yeah. way he, that's how I thought that was actually what he was his most clever name out of like, like his most clever name. Because it's a reference to a Richard Kipling poem that I really, I really, I really like to see. Yeah. Well, called, either well, either way. Um, either way. So yeah. Um, so Fr- Frenchie, his little backstory with Lamplighter. We meet Lamplighter, played phenomenally, phenomenally by Sean Ashmore, uh, who's Iceman. And actually, so he's went from Iceman to fight to Fireman. And he's really I'm good. Sure I'm sure that's really... supposed to be a joke. I'm sure that's oh, yeah. the way that he got the job. Yeah, I really like him as a character. Like, I was like, I kind of got disappointed when, like, when he killed himself. I'm like, oh no, I, I really like this guy. I want to see more of him. Yeah. But yeah, but he has, and look, his little, his little backstory with Frenchie, where they're both blaming themselves and each other for like their 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 failures. Like, this is a really interesting little backstory, and it kind of parallels the female and Stormfront, where. Female actually has a villain that she can blame, while Frenchie doesn't have somebody he could yeah. fully blame. Now, my thing with Frenchie is I actually don't like him as much as you do. Mm. And it's not necessarily something to blame the show for, but it's a genuine problem. And you know what it is? What? I, I didn't have investment in him. Like, this show didn't do a good job of making me care. No, yeah, that's why I like that episode because it showed, gave you more. Uh, I, mean, I did, but it was almost like it was too quick. Like I didn't have time. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I didn't me, get to know him enough to care when we got. I I didn't know enough about him to care when we got there. You know what I mean? I, 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 I they gave enough enough in the first season for me to like. I, I kind of want to see more of this. Plus, the actor who played Lamplighter was very good to the book. Like, I, so, I also didn't care for the. I almost. I'm so interested in like everything else. That's like, my biggest problem. We, is, that, is, that episode we have like pair. We have like a we like we we do we disagree in that episode because you you your favorite you pref- much you really really like the uh, that the butcher star like starlight storyline of that episode and you really didn't really well, care much I about. I also the, you okay. didn't really care about the prison part. I care about the prison part and didn't really care about the storm front. No, 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 this is my thing with it. Okay, it's not so much that I care more about the butcher and starlight thing. You know what it is. And that my biggest complaint with this show is that they drag things out and they have like a static. It's very comic booky. They have like a static quo, and mm-hmm. they keep going. And I'm gonna I'm gonna complain about that in the season finale. They keep going back to it. Like they'll give a reason for it's like a comic book. Like there's there's always a reason why Batman goes back to the static quo. That doesn't mean it's not stupid that he always does, right? Yeah. So this is my argument here. By the way. Going back to that prince, like, oh yeah, okay, concern, continue before I go back to the... No, so. but Starlight is my biggest problem with season one, even though she's my favorite character. Because you know the problem with Starlight is? She learns about Confound Day, and she's and she still... And she's mad at Huey. Okay, Starlight, I get it. I get it, I get it. I feel you, Annie. You're mad. He get, he's, a, he's a liar, he's a bad guy. But you know what I, you know what I do think? You can probably be leaving the seven now. Uh, but you know, but don't commit any crime. Just go... I'm sure she could have gone to Stillwell and just said at that point, I'm not feeling it. Like, like, it just, I have, like, a personal thing. They've been like, listen, I, I want, I, I miss my I mom. I think that point, though, with, St- when Stillwell was, because, like, Stillwell kind of, she kind of got, became drunk, like, got, like, became kind of, like, she kind of, like, uh, kind of ex- became bitter and just disheartened. So, like, I got that, that was actually a realistic reaction, but after Still, like, uh, still, uh, Madeline Stillwell died. I think it was more like if I fucking leave because they already kind of know. Oh, will kill me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more like I'm gonna and like no, they, but she, I mean, the season I three. Thought, season plus, three. I always thought the reason like he's at the end of the season finale. She kind of flat out says what, what I, I always thought is like I'm trying to change this from the inside. Yeah. No, but at a certain point, I feel like it's like she leaves them, to, but it's like it just she should know how that that's not a good idea. Yeah, you got like like it's like one of those things where it working it depends entirely on the show the character being stupid. Like she has to be stupid enough to believe she can do that. 
Yeah. yeah. The problem is that you can't change it in from the inside. You want to know why, Annie? Homelander is the inside. At the end of the day. Like, if Homelander found out what you were doing, if you try to change it from the inside and Homelander find out, you die. Like, literally, you'll be taking a piss, the, the wall will explode, he'll rip his hand around your neck, and he'll rip your spine out. That's what will happen. He doesn't care. And you know that, and you should know that by now. So, you know, also, you were raped here. I mean, at certain points, like, just leave. You know what I mean? Well, speaking of Homelander, Homelander, like, this season really showed you, like, I feel like it's, this is like a, it's, it's like, it's, there, there are, there, it's a kind, of, kind of like a, a common story thread for a bunch, like, for like a villain arc where they have a chance at redemption and they either turn away, like, turn away, ignore it, like, at the end, or it's rip, forcibly ripped away from them. And this Homelander like, had no chance. I only had no chance. Homelander had a chance to be a decent father, but not to be, not not a chance at redemption. I'm sorry. But you know what I'm trying to say. He had a chance of not being a complete dick. Yeah. No. A he, no. He had, he had a, chance. a chance of winning the not as bad of a guy as you could have been award. So yeah, it also proves that he's not a full sociopath because that's what I always kind of assumed he was. No, he's not. Yeah, he's just kind of an a hole. <laughs> Yeah, he's just, he's just a creep. Like, well, no, no, he, he clearly he, mentally he, messed he up in some way. He clearly mentally ill. He gives a good reason, like, especially. But, but so yeah, so but at the end though, like when when he when Storm when, like honestly, I felt bad for him when Stormfront. I mean, fuck Stormfront, but when he when she died, he was heartbroken. And when he's also talking to Ryan earlier earlier in the episode, like about I was raised in a freaking lab. Like I did not have anybody to care about me. Yeah. And like he clearly really he he loves Ryan. Why yeah. do you think he didn't That's, kill you? He loved he, he cared. He loved Stormfront too. Yeah. So, but he so he loved like so. But, but he, he loved Ryan way. But Ryan was real love because otherwise he would have killed Ryan for hurting Stormfront. Yeah, because it's they make it very obvious. Like, or at least they they then make he they, just, they then he just that. sad that Ryan did that. He just he just sad. Yeah, they they also allude to the fact that 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 Homelander is only attracted to Stormfront because she's evil and because. He, he, well, also, like, I, also, I think he, he, can, he can have sex with her. The second she, like, he can have real sex with her. The second she mentions like Nazi shit to Brian, he's like, uh, "I think I'm gonna have to talk, talk to my son later." Yeah, no, no, no. I, I did. I thought that Ryan, thing, Ryan, that a Homelander. Ryan, son, no, Ryan, son, ignore everything she says. Yeah, like no, listen, listen. I'm like, I'm a monster, but. <laughs> Like you could, you could actually see Homelander when she, for me, it was when she said white genocide. He was like, no, no, yeah, he's looking at his face like, what? he's like, oh, I don't, I don't agree with that. Like I'm a racist asshole. Well, I'm not I'm, that I'm, racist. I'm, I'm, I'm casual racism. I'm not Nazi. No, I, I'm not like let's round everybody up and kill them with it. Oh, and that we, is that her? Po oh no. Like you can almost kind of see him starting to realize. Maybe, or maybe this isn't good for Ryan. Yeah. You can also tell he's like, okay, maybe this is a bad... You know, I will say, though, what was cool, though, was that Stormfront did seem to give him generally pretty good advice. Except for that. No, I'm, I'm parenting. <laughs> no, her parenting advice... Like, that's not what I like about Stormfront, though. She's clearly, like, a regular person. Like, she's a racist, she's a racist Nazi. But she's a mom, and she's like, no, 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 you're, you are his father. Just because he's sad and tells you to go away doesn't mean you do that. That's not how a parent work, Homelander. Like, she turned around to him, and said, that, that, you're, that is true, she's right. Yeah, like, um... When your kid is sad and they say, leave me alone, you don't just say, okay, bye. You know, but when she dies, and like, and may blackmails him to like, letting him go, like, I think that, if you, without giving too much away from the books, they're teasing what's good. Like, well, he's clearly going to go evil. He's clearly going to turn evil. Well, not, well, not evil. turn evil, but you know what I mean. He's really going to go get worse. Yeah, because, like, because, like, he is, like, because, like, again, that's that's also a common thing for, like, yeah, it's, like, again, like, a lot of, like, pot, like possible redemption works for villains. is like, if whenever, like, the redemption like, is, like, or, you know, humanity is ripped away from yeah. them. They become worse than they ever were. Yeah, well, this is my thing. And this, like, and look, because like the last, like the last this two scenes, of him, thing. Where he's at the conference, and you kind of zoom in on his eyes, and he's dead. 
Like it's not like it's not that like, it's not like oh he's because he's evil. No, he's like I am like checked out and I'm he's like dead eyed. And after that scene, where he's jerking like, as a reference to the comp book where he's jerking off over over top of the city. I'm like he was like laughing to him. He's like <laughs> I'm the ground blender. I can do whatever I want. Like I'm like oh okay. Uh, keep your children, keep your babies away from this man's mouth. <laughs> Okay. No, I mean, this is what I would say about Homelander. One, this episode did a really good job of humanizing him. I mean, not this episode, but this season. Especially the final episode. The scene that made me be like, all right, Homelander's a regular person. Like, he's still a human being, right? What, 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 what? It was, it's interesting. It, it humanized the villain and demonized the hero, which is Butcher, like the protagonist. No, when I say humanizing, I mean, it's so easy to write a character like Homelander and be like, well, I don't eat because I never eat. He's like, he's like no, Homelander, Homelander makes it very, it's implied. It's like, he, he's like, no, I, I eat here. Like, yeah. I come here and I just sit down and, pay, and order food and pay for it with my, like, you know, I'm a crazy asshole, but like, I'm still a dude. Yeah, like, but again, this is I come, like, I have a favorite meal at this specific restaurant. I have, like, Homelander clearly, like, I have restaurants that I go to, that I, and I know what's on the menu. Like, I'm a, like, yeah, no, I'm a person. Like, it's yeah, so this, easy yeah. to be like, well, Homelander doesn't need food, so he's asking never eat it, which is boring and stupid. You know, this season, again, like, it, it, human, it somewhat humanized the villain, and again, demonized the protagonist. Because they really show Butcher doing some really questionable shit. Well, really for me, the only thing that he did that was more crafted and than anything from the first season was threatening to kill, uh, what's his name, the scientist? Car- Falcone's children. Like, the scientist, what's his name? Uh, I, I, only know him, I only know him from his character in Gotham, as, as Falcone. Like, yeah, um, no, uh, no, but they, they trying to, when he's trying to kill all that good scientist, the head scientist got kid. Yeah. Vogelbaum. Just, his name is Vogelbaum. Vogelbaum, yeah. When they're trying like, to kill all me, like, the like, kids. I guess for, for actors, like, I know, for actors, like, if I don't re- recognize, if I don't remember the character's name, I just think of him as, like, the most recognized world. Like, for instance, yeah, I, I, Edgar, did, 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 I get it. Like, but, Edgar, I keep, I keep calling him Gus. Like, hey, uh, that's, uh, hey, you that's, know, uh, I mean, no, so, uh, you know, but Vogelbaum, by the way, Vogelbaum, I'm so happy they killed Vogelbaum. Yeah, he's, he was actually an interesting character to me, where, like, he clearly was a man who did evil. And he's like in, the, and now that I'm at the end of my life, I'm realizing how fucked up everything I did was. Well, I think I think it's more so he's like a Homelander was a mistake. Yeah, no, and at that, well, that like it, like Homelander was just a bad was a Homelander was like multiple bad was like a, a couple hundred thousand bad decisions. Like you know, he 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 said it himself. Like I, you made me realize thing. Like like you made me put. This whole project in, like, like I had to, th- I had to like kind of re reexamine my all these all my choices with this like scientist shit. Yeah, clearly I've made a mistake. Because you're a god. You're you're a petulant man child god boy. Yeah, and he's like, and you're also you're you're the most dangerous man on the planet. Like I'm not, and nothing can stop you. I clearly I fucked up so massively. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, but moving on, to, I think we should probably try to move on to our next topic. Black Noir, I want to talk about Black Noir. That character, um, Eric, like, uh, I, again, Eric Kripke said, mentioned that he's never, not sure if he's ever going to unmask the character. Yeah. Which is interesting, because, like, again, because if you look up, because he said, like, if you ever look up who he is, like, who he is, like, in the book, it, then it's not going to be as, like, it's, like, cause, like yeah, he, he, it's he's, like, he's, like, he's, 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 like, with most of the comic book shit. You can just Google it. It's a little bit like how Marvel, when they made Far From Home, they 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 had to really work hard, and they still kind of failed to make Mysterio's... The Mysterio, it, it, there was no mystery. Anybody well, was... There, like, there you, was were, li- you were literally a Google surf from being like, oh, Mysterio, the Mysterio... This is what Mysterio first did when he first showed up. He pretended to be yeah. a good guy, and it turned out he developed... Like, this is, this is Mysterio... Yeah, like not to get into that conversation, but like, yeah, it's not. It's not it's like a Google like, search away from having the answer. Yeah, it's not like with characters like Mordo or like or the characters where like they just wrote good guys in in the in their in the particular movies. Monsieur is a character is like no, his whole mo is to, is to trick people into thinking he's a well, good no, guy. Or, or more so, like because it's a comic book, you can literally just Google Google who Google the name. I could literally type in to Google right now, Black. 
black noir, and what would I get? I would yeah, guess the answer. Yeah, so that, that is probably <laughs> on a Wikipedia page. Black wind, black noir is blank. They also unintended. They also kind of confirmed that he's not who he is. Well, in the no, book. no, 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 no. Let's not get it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't want to spoil the audience. We don't want to give away any hints. We don't want to be that. But person. I really like. I like they gave me more personality in this. Where like, oh no, no, I, 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 I so love that. In the books. I did not realize how much of a Chekhov. Like, I, just, I love the the like, in retrospective, how much of a Chekhov's gun that yeah, uh, Almond Joy was. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, when he picked it up and throws it away. Yeah, and I'm like, that's just wasteful. Because I, I remember like somebody mentioned like, I was like, that's just wasteful, and like, they were like. Oh shit! It's because he's aller actually allergic to them. No, it, it, like, well, it is. It, it is through and through a check off a gun. And but like one you don't even fit. It's like you don't even know it's a gun though. Like no, that's, no. That's good. That's when you feel it's good writing when like when they introduce a check off gun and you don't know it's a gun. Oh no, hands down, no. I mean, that but that part. I mean, I do think I do kind of. Are there any more people character we we we, we really need to talk about, or should we move on? We've been talking about character for over an hour. Edgar. Edgar. Yeah, Edgar is... Okay, so I was convinced that Edgar was the person blowing up the head. I was like... I was, yeah. I was, it was either the head guy at the church or Edgar yeah. blowing out head. Because you, because you were like wondering, like, why is he? Why is someone just scared of him? And I, I was thinking, it's a he's, a... he's a Lex Luthor character. I was like, I am... I am smarter. I am... I, I, I no. just like... But I'm like wondering if Stormfront was aware of it. I'm wondering if it, if it Stormfront is aware he has she, he has access to that person. It's like, maybe. listen, if you kill, maybe maybe people have tried to go behind his back in the past, and they've. Had yeah. It. Also, like Edgar's an interesting character, where like he's not a monster like Homelander or Stormfront, but he's also not. But he's also still a villain. I'm like, he's an interesting interesting character for me. Or he's still a villain. But he's like, I have standards. You should not. You should keep the boy. Like you have to keep the kid with his mom. Like it's not. It's gonna fuck up. Fuck us in the in the long run. Like, yeah, yeah. Like he's he like, has. A, he's like I. He's like he's like Homelander was a mistake. We all agree Homelander was a mistake, and I don't but, want another one. Yeah. Like well, you know, Homelander makes us a lot of money, but it's really not worth it. Like Homelander too big of a threat. <laughs> Cause I'm like, uh, and honestly, like the fact that honestly, I think it actually really was like a good, like it was a really good uh, red herring. Edgar is a really good red herring because the actor they cast it is a, is no, he's he's the one on the scene. He's like an Emmy winning actor that known for playing a bad guy, a villain in every single show he's ever done since 2008. So when they cast him as like their boss, and people's their heads are exploding, you immediately assume him. That's why they, I think that's why they cast him because like this is the guy you're but gonna then think. That but. Because like, oh, so there's like so there's somebody there's some suspicious power shit going on, and and oh shit, we got Gus Gustavo Fring here. He's probably and, and, and the first time and both times we see it, it seems like it would be a, yeah. Both and, times you see it, it has to do with him. No, at least no, God. but it but it would not to do with him, but it would be advantageous to Vot if that person died. Yeah, like the court hearing it had which, which, which is why you wonder what the hell is that. Congresswoman doing. What I thought are, it was uh what what was her name like uh uh from the prison like what was her name uh, uh the, Christy. I uh, mean, guess something like the the little eleven girl like um what do you think her thing and like uh from I, I scene, feel I I feel like she may not have a role I don't know you think they're like, that they're just gonna drop that drop that idea later well I, or or it'll be like a minor plot point like the, like or it'll be like Annie Homelander and Maeve have to bring her down or something. I feel like in season three, we're probably going to get a little bit of that in the beginning, of like Annie being our point of view from the seven, and Annie's probably doing legitimately good work. Yeah, you know, be like they did create super terrorists and the super. They, there's one thing that's true: you do kind of need the seven to stop the super terrorists. It's, What's funny though is, which is like it sucks to admit, but it's like really some of these super terrorists. Yeah, it kind of would be advantageous to throw Homelander at them. Also, though, why do you kill calling it the Seven? It's a Fantastic Four at this point. It's only four guys now. I wonder when you get when we get more members next, next, next season. 
I mean, they they are they've already casted like, and they're making a big deal out of casting Jensen Ackles as Soldier Boy. Yeah, but that was like five is... people. Actually, wait, no, think about that. Okay, I, I, I'm still wondering though. No, no, Joey, just... hold on, do that. Doing now, doing it in my head. Soldier Boy. Let's make it Soldier Boy returns as on the seven. We have Soldier Boy. Homelander made a train and Starlight. Is that five people? Yeah. So you would really just need two. I guess you could maybe the Deep could get back on the team during season three. Yeah. But no, here, here's my thing though with like, I, like uh, with Soldier Boy. I'm wondering is it is it going to be a Captain America thing where he's been on ice for this whole long, or is he also a mortal like Storm like Stormfront? I don't know. I because I, I, they, they, they can't have made such a they're not going to make such a big deal out of out of the casting and this character if he's only going to be in it for like a flashback or something like that. Yeah, I would assume that he has a bigger role. Like, he by the way, you would, like, I think it may not, you would, it may be, but government well, put him on ice. Not like, it's not going to be like a natural thing like with Cap, but you know, it, it will probably it, be like I mean, the government put in, him on ice. In, in the books, Vought actually does that. Like, yeah, I remember in, him, Vought puts him on ice and like unthought him when they need him. In, in the books, Lamplighter, he didn't have, he never, like, Lamplighter, whenever, in the first season when he retired, like after he retired, that's what I watched. Boiler for like, the books. I'm saying where Starlight replaces them in the books, like end in the show, after he retires. In the books, it's because he died, and they're keeping him on ice in the in, in like under in the basement and kind of just pumping him full of compound B, just at least kind of just stand up and look alive for a little bit, <laughs> so to do like me do like like a uh, photo op. So he's kind of just standing there, a dead body, kind of standing upright and kind of just brain dead, like looking around. It's like, hey, he's still retired. <laughs> he's retired. And the second they, they, everybody walks away, he just falls back down. Like, all right, let's get him back on ice. <laughs> and my, I'm, kinda, I'm actually kind of hoping Weird. that's like this really great actor that Crypt he's always worked with. But just, okay, Jensen, stand completely still like your brain dead. <laughs> And, and falls you, you, have to, you have to be in flashback to pretend to be brain dead. Yeah, no, flashbacks. But here, here's my thing, right? Yeah. You can easily replace them. Or what it would be even cooler? What? Maybe the seven won't exist next season. The Fantastic Four. No, no. The, I'm wondering if it's more so. Fabulous awesome. I'm, I'm wondering if the, I'm wondering. First of all, I don't think Annie. I think Annie going to officially leave the seven that season. You want to know why? Why? I think she's going to refuse. I think she's going to quit. I think she's gonna officially publicly quit. Because I think that season we're gonna see the seven deployed militarily, like mm. military wise. I feel like they're going to deploy the seven, and Annie will probably turn around and say no. Like I'm not going to go and murder people. Yeah. Like I'm just not gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like you're at, like it's too far. Like like I don't know. Like you're not telling me if these people are innocent or guilty. I can't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um. Yeah, I, I feel like that might be a problem though. Like, like Annie got her chip removed. I'm like I'm assuming there's no new one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm assuming maybe I'm part of the deal. Like I'll come back. I also, yeah, I also don't understand why she like why she went back. How did that work? Because I think Edgar is like, well, because like Edgar knows that she was... No, but Homelander. I mean, like, I guess like, he has to listen to them now. Yeah, because again, I, again, Homelander doesn't have a say. Edgar has a say. Edgar knows she released the V. She, like, she, she knows that she's guilty and, like, and uh, betraying, the, betraying the Seven, but, but they're like, uh, you kind of helped us get rid like, stop the kid and everything. Like, you kind of helped us with that. Plus... You don't like anything. All the damage you've done, you can you can't really do any more damage because we kind of got we've cleaned up everything that you could. You've actually you, you've actually been, you've actually helped us. Yeah, it's like on it's, it's, like, it's like, like it kind of like unintentionally. First of all, Starlink, thanks to you, we're probably gonna be in the military now. Yeah, and also thanks to you, Combat Me is making a lot more money than we ever imagined. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're like, Starlink. Like, Annie yeah. has actually helped them a lot. Edgar is like is Lex Superman. Whatever Superman destroys any Lex is shit. Lex Lex like, uh, I can just probably you know Superman, I can actually just uh take insurance out of this. Thanks a lot. You've actually made me a lot more money now. Thanks, man. So You know, I mean I do wonder I mean I understand why Annie went back. I also well, like to see where I mean, But no, I, it's five. It's it's is it's five because they mentioned Noir is in a coma. Do you think he's gonna come out? Oh yeah. So yeah, it's still says five uh, guys. You want to know why they said that? 
Because so he, he won't yeah, reveal who made this. No, made no. Because they need him off their... Because they needed him out of the story for this season. For the end of the mm-hmm. season finale. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, like, what... Because this is the thing. Noir would be on Homelander's side, I would assume. Yeah. So, like, Noir would be like, who would fight Noir? We have May. I, I, I don't know if he'd be on Stormfront's team, though. No, but you see my point. Because, like, you know, I feel like he'd actually help them if he found out, like, who... If he was a Nazi? Yeah. He probably knows. But he's like a black he man. I feel like he'd be angry. Yeah. True. I don't, I, I don't know. But no, my point, though, is that, um... That whole thing is weird. Like, the whole thing with the Seven. I don't know what they're gonna do. I, I, I don't think... I don't think this... Whatever this Annie shit thing on the... That's not gonna last. Because this season, they basically ended her. See, there's, there's, there's no way... The moment next season starts, the moment things start happening, she's gonna need to leave. Because nobody is going to it's believe. Weird, it's weird that at the end of the season, Annie rejoined her team and Huey left his. I noticed that. But you know, you know what else I wonder, though? I have to, I, have to, I don't understand this thing. I understand this thing with Huey. I don't understand this thing with Annie. Like, it, it, it be, she's the only character that they basically regress at the end of the season. She's right where she started, and she's literally right where she started. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really see it as regressing. I, 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 again, that's I think what their whole intention was with her trying to change it from the inside. Like, no, I mean, I get that, but it because is a, a Homelander, a Homelander is not the inside. Edgar is the inside. Homelander is a stooge. As much as you want to say, like, he's still the most powerful guy in the room, but he's a stooge. He no, has but to- my whole thing is that if we're going down the route, I think we're going down. Then yeah, he is the inside. And the moment Homelander eventually, which I think he were building to him deciding he doesn't care anymore, then Edgar becomes irrelevant. Yes, but like then the it's moment no, we get to the point. No, but so, but so does Vought, and so does the Seven itself. So the second Homelander leaves, right. the Seven itself becomes irrelevant. As long then as like, just, they're, then, they're, then they're all kind of the boy. Yes. Yeah, so as long as like, did as, not die. So until Homelander snaps. Edgar is the guy in charge, and Edgar can be reasoned with. So Starlight's like, I'm going to change it because Edgar can, I can reason with Edgar. I also think, and this is just me throwing it out there, there's probably also an aspect of it. She, she probably wants to keep an eye on Homelander. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm we, sure. We really badly, and I'm really worried for my personal safety. I want to keep an eye on him. No, I also think, though, she probably realized she can do more to help from the inside. That's what I said. No, I mean not not to take not to change them, but she could be like, "Ooh, hey guys, hey Huey, tell Butcher we're doing this happening. You guys gotta do something. You know, I'll help." Meanwhile, you know, Edgar and A Train are like, you know, they're not even criminals now. It doesn't. It's not a. It's not a, a, an important thing that you keep calling them, right? It's just kind of a dick move. At this oh, point. oh, oh, yeah, but like, yeah, but like, he's hot. <laughs> That's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, like, but I'm dating him, so fuck off. They're, they're like, dude, like, like Annie, Starlight, like, you, they're legal. Like, you can legal it. Like, we're not. Let's. We're not. We're not currently doing anything against the law. Like, you could. You're just being an you asshole. You are always breaking the law. It's true. You're. I'm breaking the law by existing because I am a baby that was experimented on. I mean, fuck that. No, but I mean, I liked all of that. I mean, everything was fine, in my opinion. I think, I'd like to bring up what I think the two weakest things about the, the, really the show overall. What? Like, legitimately. First of all, I don't like the, the color grain thing used that makes, like, everybody look sweaty and grimy. It's, it, it, it's, it's kind of a, it, it's a no. running thing. No, no, running they, thing. they, sometimes, I feel, I feel like they use it when it's inappropriate sometimes. Yeah, if you ever read the book, the book itself is very grainy. And grainy. No, no, I understand that, but like, there's a scene in season one when a- the scene when Andy and Hugh are in the bowling alley. Mm. They use for like this grainy feature, and they look like they're covered in dirt and sweat. Like they're just a- I have a bowling alley. Yeah, again, like, there the was book- no need for that color grain there. Yeah, the book itself also has a very grainy color. You know, but that's a criticism of the show, and then the second criticism is this season, the boys seem to be able to get anywhere undetected, despite being the most wanted. 
with like no difficulty. Like they, you don't even have to show them do it. They have to do it. Yeah, that 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 was that is like kind of a a, a problem for me. Like with, it, it, it's really contrived. If, if what it it's is, like, it's like like you know what you know what I feel like again. Then again, like I feel like the only reason they're doing it is because like they're like it would be it would be way too much. Like it's like, let's just kind of keep the story going. No, I get that, but like they make a like, big yeah, deal. Feel, like a good like, but I feel like I, I oh it would be like it, more realistically it would have been like. Venom Lethal Protector of the comic book, where Eddie Brock, when he's in San Francisco, he's kind of like walking in, walking down the street normally, and he says, "I can't, I have to be in constant hiding to everywhere I go because I'm the most wanted man in America for being Venom." And That's and a then, running thing for that series. Like, I can never show my face, and and, like, and then he's just walking around face out. Yeah, he's like, because even with my face out, though, I'm still a wanted man. You know, my thing though, like in the beginning of the scene, they make a big deal out of it. Like he was like he was and you're like he was like a hood on, he's like, hey. Meanwhile, they was, exactly. meanwhile, Adrian established I, I could, he could have found him if he have ever actually tried. No, but then, but then, but then he's like, "Hey, Annie, Annie, you set your brother phone. You got the brother phone, right?" He's like freaking out. So he's like, "Yes, dude, kill!" And then you cut to like the final episode, it's like, well, like not like, but, like the last episode, and he gets captured. He would turn around. Hey, want to go break in? Sure. No hood. Well, like, he, he doesn't even wear like a fucking hood. He just drives around like. And, 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 then, and then later, a couple episodes later, him, Mother's Milk, and Annie are just what? Are just killing? They're just eating. He's literally eating in a diner. Like, well, that's, like that, that's supposed to be a bum fucking in the middle of. Like, you know, I get that, but to, it, but then they're able like the only time this season that they actually are covert, where they should be covert a lot, they're only covert once. Like when they break into the lab. Yeah. Aside for that, like they, but you're, but you're just, I mean, literally, they're in a fucking pawn shop, and they don't even have, like, covered their facing when they walk, but you're just, walks, it's like, hi, Becca, let's hug, right in front of the door. No one in the middle of this city is like, wait a minute, that guy just walked into that store from when, when he got Purell. That's you, that's you, be careful. Oh, I see our FBI move, whoa. FBI. Yeah. Like, you would think, it's not like, like, you see them just wandering around. They're not wearing hoodies, or at least in the first episode where Huey and Annie meet, they go, they at least go out of their way to have Hugh, Jake, whatever his name is, uh, the actor who plays yeah. Huey, put on a hood, lower his head, and, like, creep around. Most of the time, the rest of the season, they're just, like, the actors are just playing the characters, like, hey, hey, hey oh, who cares? Yeah, like, um... Nothing bad can possibly happen. I just feel like, I also feel like they need to do better at establishing how, what the powers of the superheroes are. Yeah, because, like, again, like, if, they, if it's so easy for a train to find them, why did they... No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. So here's my example. In season one, they make a point to say most of the soups are invincible, right? They, 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 one of the quotes is, they use every single weapon known to man, and they implied nuclear weapons against Homelander. No, but let's, let's look at Trent Lucid. They spend an entire episode trying to figure out how to kill Translucent. With Con and, and Homelander and Maeve. So they all think, and Annie gets like shot like five times by a rifle and she's fine. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that implies to me that they should be bulletproof, right? Some of them are. No, no, that's the problem though. It's like, if I don't understand the level of threat the villain poses, then I can't, then that lowers my threat of worry as defense for the character. You know what I mean? You need to clearly define, like, so like in the lab, it's like, they have this guy at gunpoint, I'm like, so wait, can they kill this guy with a gun or not? Like, are they, oh, they, they or yeah, are they in they, danger? They I don't know. Getting, they let her show him getting with acid on his face, and it only seems to slightly... Yeah, really so that's my point, though, it's like, it's, you know, they need to, they, should, they need, I feel like they should establish more. Yeah. You know, like, who's a threat to our character and who isn't? Yeah. Because the deep, the deep is supposed to be a joke character, so he has no bulletproof skin or anything, or super strength. I hate the deep. I hate the deep. The deep is a loser. Which the deep is like, uh, which means like well, the deep is an Aquaman. The deep is an Aquaman joke. Because which Aquaman is almost offensive because again, Aquaman is one of those badass characters in in DC comics, and it shows the show, again, it shows to show you how much Garth Ennis really hated, like when he wrote the character, how much he hated they hated these characters because like. 
or at the very least, how much Eric Kripke. And it's like Garth has never gave a shit about the character. At least how the creators of the show never really gave don't really care about Aquaman because he's really a joke in the show. And that's actually what bothers me is Aquaman is a bad. No, but I I feel like he's more supposed to be a joke on like the public perception of Aquaman. Yeah, but still. I mean, there's a good. I mean, there's that there's that quote from the that DC Abridged series online, which is great, where Batman says to make a cartoon about us, where all he can do is talk to fish. <laughs> it's like the public thinks that we all know Aquaman cool, but the public thinks he's a loser. They can screw him. But no, I mean, you know, they're talking like, about a guy. They're cuts from talking about a guy who can make Superman bleed. This guy's pretty badass. You know, but I mean, I feel like we've talked on a lot of stuff, so I feel like we just. Now touched on two things. Well, yes. Let's talk about really the end. The ending of the show and then what comes... The ending of the season and what comes next. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Butcher in the final episode. Okay. Like, straight up, I want to talk about the choice. Because I want to talk about him deciding to save Ryan. Well, it's very clear he wasn't going to save Ryan until Homelander showed. Until Homelander reminded no, him. But, like... No, when he decided to, to, to tell them to get away. That was when he made the decision he was going to take care of Ryan. He wanted Ryan to get away with his mom. What did you think? Do you think it was them hugging when he was like, she, she really loved It was them hugging. He's like, I, I, he's like, I think it was he that never, was when he realized. He never met the kid until then. He only saw him like for a second when, like, in the, at the end of the first he season. He saw the but, kid hugging his mom and crying, and he realized it was a real yeah, kid. Yeah. He realized, oh, this is, this is a legitimate little boy. Oh. Then after he killed, then after he killed, killed Becca, he's like, I'm gonna kill this kid. And also, Homelander flies down. No, no, I don't think that'll be the four Homelander. No, uh, no, they weren't. They were. He was Greg going to grab his crowbar, and this is before Homelander even shows up. So he looked. No, no, no I, I thought he was getting Homelander. ready for. He knew Homelander was coming, and he was getting ready. No, no, because no, because he looks directly at the kid angrily. No, but I feel like that's what Jabot he's thinking funny. about it. But then he decides not to. I feel like that's no Homelander. Like Homelander made him decide not to, but he was going to kill the kid. I'm positive. No, but only the, I feel like what helps it, though, with the kid crying. Yeah, they really focus on the kid crying. Yes, but I'm well, I think they, they're, fo they're making, focusing on the fact that Buster is aware. He's like, this is a kid that just killed. Like, the kid is messed up by this experience. I'm positive, though, Butcher was, like, at least for a second, he was planning on killing this, this child. Oh, I think he was thinking that. I think he then decided. When Butcher threatened to threat kill, um, uh, Ro Rogobon? Yeah. Rosenbaum's uh, grandchildren, he meant it. Oh, no. But I think the fact that Becca said, don't kill him. I feel like that helped. But that's a bit, the love of his life was like, please do not hurt my son. He was like, god damn it. You know what I mean? I feel, I feel like oh, it was like, great. He was like, I want, I think you were right. I think he was like, I want to kill him so badly. But I can't do it. Not because I care. Not because of any moral reason. Because I love Becca too much to do that to her. To dis it was more like a thing about it more. I think it was more originally about Becca. You know what I mean? Like it was less about Ryan and more like I want to kill him, but I but Becca asked me not to. You know what I mean? And then that was her up. last request. Homelander shows up and he doesn't like go. Like a fucking with horror movie, drenched in blood. So I feel like even if Ryan, like even if Ryan, look, Ryan, like. Ryan was going to go to, like, there, even if there's a chance how Ryan was going to go to Homelander, Homelander, seeing him covered in human blood, he's like, I think I'll take my chance with the angry British man. No, I love the scene, though, where he walks over and Buster looks at him and he's like, you can almost hear him going, I like this kid. <laughs> he's like, screw Homelander. Homelander's a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, this is a like, smart he also child. Tells, he also tells us that... <laughs> At least this is what I what I get. At least what I what I saw, like what, what my interpretation of this was, is that after Maeve threatens threatened like blackmails Homelander to leave him alone, and Butcher takes the kid and walks away, he actually looks at Homelander for a minute, and actually, I, from the way he looks, he looks like he feels sorry for him, like you're losing your child, like. He, he's, he, he, he's, he's like, you know what? He's, he's like, if Becca and I had a kid, I would never want that. Yeah. Like, he's almost like, I'm a monster, but I did love my wife, and if we had... You can tell, but there, if he had had a kid with Becca, he would have adored that kid. Yeah, but no, but he, he almost pity he, Like, you don't know if he feels bad for him, but he pities Homelander. He's like... Well, I also I also get the vibe that it is, like, a very adult moment where he's like, I hate you so much. Yeah. But since you seem to care... I understand. I, I hate no, you. No, I, I understand, and you know what? And, I, and it's almost like this look of, like, I hate you... But on this, you can trust me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's why Homelander doesn't go after Butcher, though. 
I feel like that part of it. I feel like he looked, they kind of look at each other and they, it's almost like this moment of they hate each other. They vehemently disagree, but they both seem interested in Ryan being healthy and safe. Yeah. And it's almost like a moment of Buster being like, I'm not going to hurt your son. And Homelander just like, okay. Then I'm not willing. I feel like if maybe if he thought Buster were going to kill Ryan, he would have just kept punched Nave in the head and attacked. Yeah. He would have been like, I don't care, that's my son. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's kind of a silent moment of him being like, I'm not going to kill your son. <laughs> like, don't worry about letter, your son is safe. Like, the one thing you care about is safe. Yeah, and, and the home, and home is like, all right, well, I have nobody. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm the greatest superhero. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you were going to get me demonetized. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna have, there are so many things in this video that I'm going to have to like, put something over the screen. <laughs> Like an image or something, but no, um, you know, I feel like that's my favorite moment in the show because behold, that was like my one time where I was like, Butcher, don't be a fuck. I was yelling. My TV is over, it's right over there. Shit, <laughs> it's, it's over in that direction. Like I was watching on a couch right there. My TV there, and I was watching. And I remember I got up and I was like, Butcher, don't be a fucker for one. <laughs> like don't. Hurt the kid, and then he does it. I'm like, don't be the comic book. Don't be the comic book. <laughs> no, I'm like, thank fucking god, he didn't kill a child. And then, by the way, favorite scene. I was slightly sad though. I do have a question though. What? what are they doing with this boy? They're like, he put, he gets it like a I thing. Mean, they're, I think, they're, I think they put us giving to him like a foster family. Yeah, they're, 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 they're gonna dump him in a family like. So, um, hello, uh, English, hello, Brit, hello, people of Ireland, here's a baby! <laughs> it, would, it would be interesting, though, like, again, I don't, I, don't, I don't expect it to happen, but I would kind of like to see if, um... What happened, if, Ryan? No, if, 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 like, they mentioned that she's taken in by, uh, Mallory's, like, Mallory's, like... I feel like they were taken out of the country. I feel like yeah. that's the implication. Like, didn't they say to Mother Milk they would take his daughter to him to another place, to like another country? Yeah. I feel like that. You know, you know what I want to see? What? I want to see who gets him. I'm sure it's a really good family. Yeah, probably. So, like, probably a very Kent's family. Like, you know, I'm interested, like, in that. But, yeah. I mean, I feel like what we what we do need to get into is just... But, so we ha we really talked about everything, have we? Is there anything else you want to bring yeah. up before we get into the, like what's next? Yeah, no, we're good. So, what do you think next season? We know nothing. I, it is currently just to give people an idea as of the recording. The episode came out on Thursday last week. It is Sunday the eleventh, so at nine fifty four p.m. at the time we are recording this. So we have. Zero idea. We have no trailer, the, no the, plot. The, the, the only thing... We know the actors that are in it. That's it. You know, the only thing is that they're making a big deal about the casting of Soldier Boy. Yeah, but even then, like, the, the, all we know is that he's been cast in the role and he's important. And, and, and he's going to be important. Like, yeah, and that's, we, that, we, know that's a, we know a character named Soldier Boy will be important and we know who's playing him and we know the rest of the cast that's returning. Um, um, that's and, it. And, and, the, the reason the casting, like, uh, you, you, you don't really care about this, but like uh, the reason people are more, in, are like they're emphasizing in catching Soldier Boy is that Eric Kripke, the showrunner, he's, he's famous for a show called Supernatural. Jens Knackles is star of that show, and the show Supernatural just kind of ended last. Like they were one episode away before COVID, like the final, the final, yeah. the final episode. They're, they're, go, they're, they're going to be finishing it though, yeah. Yes, but Jens Knackles is a huge comic book fan. Huge Batman, huge, huge Roy, he voices Red Hood and Under the Red Hood. Did, did, and, no, uh, I do. I have one up. So when you get so when you get this guy involved, you are look. You are asking for top notch acting and a yeah, guy who really invested in the role. Yeah. Yeah. But no, what I want to just get into, right? What I feel like we need to get into it, right? Yeah. And what I do want to talk about briefly uh, is also I want to ask you. They mentioned Stormfront. I don't know if if if, if no Stormfront's alive. I know. Yeah. Yeah, because I said she's alive. But like, no, they're gonna bring her back. You, you, you want to you know what else? Aya Cash is too damn good. Like, Stormfront is too charismatic. Aya Cash is too good. I, I don't think they'll be got together with Homelander. I feel like Homelander probably going. You know, what I think will probably happen. It will probably be a thing of why, what did you do, to make my son so upset, 
Like, what did you do to my son? Like, I, the, I, I feel like Homelander doesn't care about Becca, but he does care to see Becca hurt with... You remember, what, that was how he... Rebe, uh, Becca was controlling him. He said, I'll kill myself in front of Ryan and tell him you did it. So, yeah. he, so he understands that Ryan cares about Becca. So I feel like it would be like, what did you do to, to, get, to, get, to scare my son that much? What the yeah. hell did you do to my baby boy? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't think the relationship is over because she, you know, she, she, any chance she had a relationship with Ryan. They're not attractive died. anymore. Well, no, any chance she had there because she ruined her chances at having a relationship with Ryan. She hurt Ryan. Yeah. She, she hurt, she, yeah. like, what is she going to say? I murdered his mom in front of him? How long could it be like, wait, wait, you murdered my son's mother in front of him? Like, I don't give a shit. No, I should kill you for that. Like, I don't give a shit about her, but I give a shit that you almost traumatized my kid. Yeah, no, I mean, when he got freaked out at the restaurant, like, it's not just like, I love my son. It's like, no, when he got freaked out at the restaurant, I oh, was like, picked him up in his arms. I was like, it's going to be okay. He was like, yeah. it's going to be okay. Danny's here, and he flew him away. So Homelander and Stormfront, they're done. Like, I know there was, a pro- there was a promotional video from, like, a... a- last year like it was like a few months after the first season where it was like uh it was like some little short they released where it was supposed to be a homelander as a, as a little boy where he's sitting alone like with like a nanny or something like that talking to her and all of a sudden like his laser vision kind of goes off and he kills her and all of a sudden like you see like vocal bomb behind and get another man like, get another mother yeah, that's, that's in the season dude that's i don't that, remember that yeah that was in season one that, that that was a flashback in season one. That, that was when we saw the flashback to him in the in, in the in, in the cage. He no, was, you see him as a baby, not as a. a no, child. no, and you see him like very young, playing with a nanny or something. He hugs her. Remember, he hugs the nanny and he kills her. No, and that was they, that was. And then they say, a, "Get another nanny." That, no, that. that was the first release afterwards. That was not a part of the actual show. Was it not? Yeah, it wasn't. People, you don't want to know something? Let's not argue about it. Comment section. Decide. Mm. Yes, Who uh, is right? Yes, I want to The fucker? See the cunt fucker? Or me? The guy you come here to watch? Oi. 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 No, <laughs> but, uh, so, what, so next season, I feel like, I feel like next season will probably be Origins of Vought. I feel like there's going to be four seasons. Next season will be set up for a lot of, will be a set up season for the finale. You know what I mean? I'm like, kind of wondering. Origins of Vought, you know, Origins of Vought. And tying up loose plot line, and then season four will be the end all be all. Like my, I think my only thing is though is if you drag out Homelander too long, like his snap too long. I think like... no, but I think I said before. I think what they'll do with Homelander is they have other stuff they need to do. Right? Like they have they have a lot of other plot lines they need to wrap up. Right? So you know what they'll do with yeah. Homelander? They'll send him on a wild goose chase for a while looking for Ryan. Like that yeah, will be what keeps because he, he's their second, their second top next to uh, uh, the uh, Carl Urban who plays Billy Butcher. He's their top, their top build actor. So like, they need to keep him as a main character. So I'm like, no, I feel like they'll probably show him, but it will. They'll probably show him on like a quest to find Ryan, and you know when he when he eventually it will be like a quest when you get more and more depressed. Like you're like you're trying, and every time you go, he like, goes into a small town and. China. He's like, hello. He he's being nice. He's not even killing people. He's just like, have you seen my son? No. You no. haven't. <laughs> Never mind. No, and, 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 then, and then he's just like, okay. I don't, I don't even. I, I'm too sad to kill you. Like, you get to the point. It, where would, like, it would be kind of funny if it was like Frieza and the Dragon Balls and Namek, where he's like, didn't you guys have my son? Uh, no. <laughs> Next no, I can almost imagine it would get to the point when you it starts out like that, like he killed somebody, and you think stuff like that throughout a couple episodes. And then you're like, and then you're the, no, and then you're the end of the season when he decides to go home. He just, he goes and he's asked this like old lady. He, he's asked this guy he's like, "Have you seen my son?" And the guy's like, "I don't know who you're. I don't know who the fuck you are. I never seen. I don't know who the fuck you are." He's just like, "Yeah, sorry, Bobby." He just walks out. He's like, he just he's so sad. Like he given up. He just gives up. He's like, "I know. I I don't even have Amy to kill you. I'm just so sad." You know what I mean? He's like, "I've been to every country in the world. I've asked." All the people that I thought would have the information, no one knows where my son is. And then he go, and then he go back, and then he like played the role in the finale. And then next season is 
full on psycho homelander. Because I'm waiting, I'm kind of because I'm both looking forward and also dreading when he goes full supervillain. Yeah, I feel like that will get rid of my favorite part of the show, which is like, which is like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like it has I to really happen thought. eventually, but I feel like the best part of the show is a Homelander, whenever he's on screen, what makes it so cool is that you're on edge. Like, even when he's talking to Ryan, you're like, you're kind of on edge. You're like, what's he gonna do? Yeah. Like, you had to feel, it's, it's like you're talking to a crazy, it's like you're talking to a crazy person in real life. It's like, like, on, the, that, it's like, it's like on the street when you bump into somebody that's crazy in New York City, and you're kind of apprehensive, you're like, are they gonna pull a knife on me? Like are they? Like some of the best, are they, they going to stab me? I don't know. And then they don't, and you're like, "Oh my god, I thought those drug addicts were going to pull knives on me and kill me." Yeah, it's like, well, like some of the best villains in fiction, like even what characters who are very, very different from each other, like personality-wise, one of the few things they usually have in common is that you are constantly on edge whenever they're on the screen. Um, and I'm talking about like Joker, Homelander, like Kingpin from from like from Daredevil, like or. Hannibal Lecter, Darth Vader. You, these are characters that if you you're, you're, you're like, like, are they gonna win? You're, you no, feel, not even, it's not even, no, it's not even are, are they going? It's but like what the hell are they gonna the do? Person in the room next to them going to walk out of the room alive? Yeah, no, for that's in my thing. For, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm curious what's gonna happen with Huey. Yeah, he's pretty much working for the for the villain now. Or super villain. Uh, I feel like you know what it is. It could. I feel like you. Know, I feel like they were. They were. They ended it in a way in case they didn't get renewed. Yeah, because like I feel like because like, if, 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 if again if, if they continue this plot line, is it going to be like a Bolin Kuvira thing where he's kind of like in denial about no. working for? You know what I think it's going to be. What? I think it's going to be very standard. Everybody at the end of the season went back to normal lives, and then there's a new, and then something happened, and he get. And I feel like. And I feel like he'll just, I feel like what, what will happen is Annie will be withdrawn. Like Annie will be like, listen, Huey. So like, how are things going? And she'll just be like, okay, okay, I gotta be honest, things aren't going very well. This is happening. And he'll be like, you're in First danger. Or, you know, and he'll be like, you're in danger. And he'll like call up Butcher. And he'll be like, listen, this is happening. Annie's in trouble. I went in. You know what I mean? Mm. He'll be like, he'll call up Butcher. He'll be like, then again, Butcher, Butcher may not be a member of the team. Mother Milk probably will be. Yeah. Mother, but, Milk, Frenchie, Buster. So I feel like I'm excited for next season. Do you know what I'm excited to see? What? The boys with, like, actual funding. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, like, I know in the book they have funding. Like, it's like, um... Not, like, but, a ton uh, of funding, but funding, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like an off-the-books thing. So it's like, we're gonna give, you're gonna give you money for guns, but we're not gonna give you money for backup. Or like a bit. No, but it's like it sounds like they're gonna be like an official team now, like an official thing, right? Yeah. Kind of off the book, but like they'll have enough money that they'll probably have like a decent place to stay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they won't be they they won't have to like rely on like rapists and like human traffickers to get like a base of operations. Yeah. But one of the things I really I really appreciate about this season though is that they introduce a bunch of small characters from the comic books, like a bunch of little like one-off characters, like Butcher's dog, who, which is kind of like the mascot of the team in the book. I yeah, I know. Yeah. And also the the love sausage, which is the guy with the big the prehensile penis. Oh my god, really? Love sausage, that's his name. Wow, okay. But yeah, I don't think there's much more like with that with that name in your head. No, I don't think there's a ton to talk about now. I think have we hit basically everything from this season in the past like yes. over an hour. Yeah, let's just some look oh real summarize our, our our opinions. Like you go first. Like I I loved it. I mean, there are very few shows that I like as much as The Boys, I think. And I don't mean to say it's like a favorite show. The Boys is weird for me. It's not like, it's, I, I definitely wouldn't call it my favorite show. Like, yeah. I don't have, like, I, I mean, my favorite shows are things that I have, like, emotional attachments to. Yeah. I just have a really good time. The Boys, did, the best thing I can say about it is that it's a good show that I have a, that, but more than that, I have a really fun time watching it. Like, I had yeah. a really good time. Like, I wouldn't... My, all my favorite shows are, like, things that I have, like, emo Characters that I have, like, emotional investment in. I don't have much emotional investment in this show. Like, it just... I just have a really... I tune in every week, and I have a really good time, and it's fun to talk about. And it's well-written, it's well-acted, the cast is great, the cast... They all have great chemistry with one another. It's overall... It's just good. 
Like, it's it's weird. You don't normally say things like that anymore. Like, there aren't, there aren't that many shows nowadays that I can just say are just good. This show is that. It's just good. Yeah. Um, Monthly, I liked... I, li- I really like the show. It's one of my favorite, like, shows, like, on, on now. I, was, I mean, I, I, to be fair, it's like, how many shows are on right now? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. That's it's, a pandemic, yo, boy. Ah, uh, it's sad. Um, but I think, well, I think, like, it's it's one of the better su- better superhero sh- comic book shows. I think while Daredevil, Punisher, and the first season of Jessica Jones are overall better shows, like, better made, better acted, better written, The Boys is still a re- up there as one of the best. Like, well, I feel one- like The Boys, and I haven't seen those shows, but I feel like The Boys' biggest thing, as I was saying, and there's something about it. I don't know if it's the chemistry with the actors or, or the way of the writing being really clever, but it just... You have to have a good time. Like it's, it's like it, it, it's it's the team up between Kripke and Rogan, who are both yeah. very good. It's like, like regardless of the quality of the show, Kripke. it's just so you have, to have like even if the show is like like even if the show is better and like it's more deep and interesting, this show is probably more. You're probably gonna have a more fun time watching yeah. the boys. Yeah. Like, like you, um, it's it's almost like I've almost, I've almost said it had like that shock aspect of Game of Thrones. Yeah. But it had, but it's very funny. So it's like you're you're either laughing or you're going, "What the fuck?" Yeah, like, like, like uh, I once heard a story, an interview from Jack Quaid, who was um, Huey, about like his. Is it Jack or Jake? Oh my God, I thought it was Jake. Jack, Jack. Uh, the okay. son of two famous actors. Um, okay. He said he auditioned for the role. Yeah. Like, um, I, uh, I think I don't know if he was auditioning for it or he just got it. Like, or he's all doing his first like set or something like that. He said like he was a big fan of a uh, huge fan of like not a huge fan. He's a, he's a fan of Seth Rogen. A big fan of Seth Rogen. Who's a very 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 funny actor. A very good writer. Like a lot of people, a lot of people you only really know him for his covers, like his comedy roles. But he's a very good writer, like movie okay. writer. Yeah. And so he's like, and he's like, this guy, this guy he's, like, he's like, oh, I, I'm really excited. Like, and I'm like, I really, really excited to meet. I'm really excited to be a part of this. I'm really excited to do like do do something with this. He's like, he's like also really kind of really excited to hear like. And he's like, I'm, probably, I don't, I'm not sure if Seth Rogen's even gonna be here. But he's like, I really would like to meet him. So he's gonna go down the hall to like to either do do his audition or do the first set. And all of a sudden he hears, <laughs> he's here. And he's like, he's like, because if you ever, if you don't really know Seth Rogen, he has a very distinctive laugh. And he's like, the second he heard it, he's like, he's here. And just looking around. He, like later on, he says like, I've heard like really fun stuff about on this, on the set of the, the show. Because like, apparently, got- apparently this show is really fun. This, this is a really fun set. In season yeah, like- one. Not so much season two. But in it's season like- one, they had a lot of fun filming. It's like I, I once heard like a, like a, a, a scene, like a blooper scene, where the guy who plays Homelander was like doing a scene where he's throwing a baseball, and he keeps like dropping it, like missing it, and he's like, "I'm from fucking New Zealand. We don't have baseball in New Zealand. We have croquet." And he's like making jokes, like we have croquet in New Zealand, not baseball. I don't know how to play it. He's like I don't know how to play. I don't know how to throw a baseball. Like, you know, like, the guy, I recently saw on Twitter, like, the guy who played Hugh on Twitter did, like, a video where he's, like, sitting next to, like, him and all, the whole cast are, like, driving to do something, like, do a set. And he kind of turns the thing to, to like, the guy, to uh, Anthony Starr, a Homelander. It's like, hey, hey, it's like, hey, Anthony, you're playing Homelander, like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's kind of, like, getting, he's like, he's getting in the character, right? Shut the fuck up. He's like, fuck off. He's like, yeah, he's getting in the character, he's getting in the character. He goes, like, hey, Anthony, fuck off. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's 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 good. He's getting it. Yeah, he he's like getting ready to start filming. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's not he's like he's speaking in his Homelander voice, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, well, so. guy, um, yeah. I'm gonna cut you off, but you know, uh, do we have any? Do we, is there anything else you have to have to say about the thing that looked really good? What did you like? What did you do? Uh, no, I thought it was very good. I'm excited for the next season. I'm excited for Jensen Ackles, and I think this, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I'm excited for what's to come. Yeah, no. So yeah, this was fun. Uh let me know what you thought of this. I know with the exception of a few images there probably isn't much editing in this. I know my green crane is just the greatest setup right now. I'm not at home at the moment. But yeah, I'm this was really fun to film. It was easy. Um so let me know if you liked it or enjoyed it all that. Well else, have a good day. Tell us your thoughts. We're interested. What did you think of the boys?
Hey, right. hey, wait, how, how is this camera, this, this video thing going to be a set? Like, am I going to be like, am I thinking it's going to be next to yours? Uh, you, will see, you will see it when it goes live. You will, I'll show you after the stream. That's not after the stream, it's in a stream after we're done recording. But I just want to say to everybody, watch kind of, kind of like, look, look, Just look to the side like, to see where you are. Like, no, dude, stop. <laughs> Let me end the video. <laughs> Let me end the podcast. Tell me what you thought of the boys in the comment section down below. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you're new, but above all else, let us know what, if you're interested in the sequel to The Boys. That come, that, that we, we, gotta, we gotta get that cha that uh, petition going since there's a sequel series. The Girls. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>